solve because we made a dua to Allah. Understand the reality of dua. What is the purpose of dua? We, are, we, often, consume, we often confuse dua with talab. Talab in Arabic means to ask for something, to demand something. Dua means literally to call. That's what it means. Da'utukum, I called you, I invited you, I cried out to you. This is dua. When we make dua to Allah, sometimes in that dua we are making demands. It's true. We're making requests. But we should never forget that all of those requests, you know what they are at the end of the day? It's a humble slave of Allah turning back to Allah and begging Allah to help him with whatever problem. But it's more than Allah sol solving your problem, it's just the act that you communicated with Allah that's the most valuable thing. The fact that you actually engaged Allah in conversation, that is the goal in the end. Whether or not Allah will solve your problem medi immediately is a, is a separate problem. And I want to share just a quick thing about that, then I come to Maryam Salamun Alayha. Sometimes you go through problems and you ask yourself, what is my fault in all of this? Why do I have to go through these problems? What did I do to deserve this? Uh, let me ask you this. Yusuf salam was a child, right? A child by definition is innocent. What did the child do to deserve being kidnapped? What has a child ever done to deserve being thrown inside of a well in the middle of the woods? What has a child ever done to deserve being sold as a child slave in a different land? What is that when he grows up, as a young man, what did he ever do to deserve being thrown in jail over a false accusation? And he spent many years in jail, not because of something he did, he was innocent. And he spent all those years in jail. He went through situations in life that if anybody else went through those situations, you'll say, life is unfair, man, what are you gonna do? Life is unfair, you know? But you know what happens to a believer? They don't just say life is unfair, they say Allah is unfair, ma'adullah. Allah did that to him. Yet Allah says in Surah Yusuf, Allahu ghalibun ala amrihi. Allah was overlooking everything he did in his decision. Every decision that was made for Yusuf, Allah was dominating that decision, overlooking that decision. How? Sometimes you and I go through difficulty because Allah knows something better is coming. Sometimes that better thing that is coming is for you. Sometimes it's for somebody else. Sometimes it's not for you. Sometimes it's for somebody else. Sometimes the benefit of your difficulty will come back to you, the re return will come back to you while you are still alive. Sometimes the return is meant to come back to you after you go, go back to Allah. What happened with Yusuf A father was separated from a child. It's a tragedy, isn't it? But imagine if he was never kidnapped, he would never be in the well. If he was never in the well, he would never end up in Egypt. If he was never in Egypt, he would have never grown up there and been, been thrown into prison. If he was never in prison, he would have never met those two guys he met in prison, whose dream he interpreted. If he never met those two people, one of them who got to live and go back to the king, and when the king saw a dream, a strange dream, he would have never said, wait, I know someone who can help interpret your dream. And if that never happened, and you know what that dream was? Seven good years in the country, and seven years, there's not gonna be any crop, any produce, any harvest, people are gonna starve to death. If Yusuf was not in prison, alayhi salam, and then was taken out to interpret that dream at that time, there would have been an economic, financial, social crisis in the country, and hundreds of thousands of children would have starved to death. One child suffered for a few years. But because of that child's suffering, Allah's plan was to save a lot of families, a lot of fathers and mothers from losing their children to starvation. Because of the plan that Yusuf salam came back when he interpreted the, dream and, interpreted the dream and gave, when he became the treasurer. I have a friend, some of you might have heard of him, his name is Robert de Villa. I asked his sister about him if she knows him, and she said, yes, she's heard of him. The man can't move any part of his body other than his face. He can't move any part of his body. What did he ever do to deserve that? Nothing. But how many people have accepted Islam because of his disability? How many people have just heard about that and have come back to Allah? How many people that were ungrateful in life, even though they were Muslim, they were only Muslim by name, and decided to submit their heart back to Allah because that man is sitting in a bed? His suffering, his pain, becomes guidance for millions of people. You understand? Sometimes the difficulty you and I go through 
is actually a small price to pay for a lot of khair, a lot of good that will either come to me now or it will come to me in the akhirah, will come to me after I go back to Allah.